Sunday after the Ascension, who was taken from St. Peter. Dear belo dearly beloved, be prudent and watch in prayer. But before all things, have a constant mutual charity among yourselves. For charity covers a multitude of sins. Using hospitality one towards another, without murmuring. As every man has received grace, ministering the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the words of God. If any minister, let him do it as of the power which God administered. That in all things God may be honored through Jesus Christ our Lord. And please stand for the Holy Gospel. Which is taken from St. John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, When the paraclete cometh, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceedeth from the Father, he shall give testimony of me. And you shall give testimony because you are with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you may not be scandalized. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the hour cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doth a service to God. And these things will they do to you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the hour shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. Thus are the words of the Holy God. I'm sorry that my voice is a little weaker at this time of day. I think it has something to do with uh, going up in the airplane and coming back down. Pressurization, depressurization, and before you know it, your vocal cords are all messed up. But that's all. So uh, we just saw the Blessed Mother crown at the beginning of this Mass, or before Mass, in honor of the month of May, which belongs to Our Lady. There are a few reasons for this. One of them is that we have devoted the time to our Lord very heavily during February, March, and April because of the observance of Lent, the 40-day vigil before Easter, and now we've had almost, sorry, we've had 40 days since Easter, and that brought us to the Ascension, Ascension Thursday. And about this time of the year, even though it varies, we're um, just after kind of sending, us, sending our Lord to heaven with the Ascension, and we begin to think again about the Mother of God, who's going to be the one who will give us all the fruits of our Lord's sacrifice on the cross. That's one reason that we give May the mother of God. Another one is that uh, for all those who live in the northern hemisphere where Rome is, I think we're in the northern hemisphere here, but just about one degree above the equator. Maybe we're below here, I'm not sure, but it's not really the northern hemisphere. If it was, <clears throat> we would see that everything is coming back to life at this time. Uh, everything is green and the flowers are present and these kind of things showing that uh, as nature buds forth in life again, our Blessed Mother is giving us all the life that comes from the crucifixion. She's giving it to our soul. So that's the second reason. First one is that you know, we meditated on our Lord heavily during February, March, and April. Second one is that Our Lady is the life that comes to souls since she is the Mother of Grace. And the third one, and perhaps this one is just invented, uh, of all the months in the year, the one which is called May, is almost the word Mary, M-A-R-Y versus M-A-Y, <coughs> almost the same word. In fact, there's a lot, there are a lot of ladies who have the name of Our Lady, the name of the Mother of God for the name, Mary, and they go by the nickname May. So that would be a third reason, but I think that's quite uh, remote. It happens to work in English, but I don't think it works in all languages. And I'm not sure if all the languages make use of the same words, the names 
of the month, the names of the months either. <coughs> but something I think we should all concentrate on and meditate on at this time of year, in regard to our Blessed Mother, <coughs> is that she makes a big sacrifice again. And that sacrifice would be staying behind to take care of the infant church, which our Lord starts at this time. So, you know, our Blessed Mother was in this world for at least 15 years before her son was born. Our Lord lived 33 years. Then our Blessed Mother was staying here with the infant church for another 15 or 16 years before she went to heaven. So her age is the age of our Lord, 33 years, plus about another 30 years. I think that makes 63 years. She might have lived longer than that. And even then, we're not sure if she actually died before she was assumed into heaven, or if she died and then was assumed. It seems to me that there's more arguments to say that she, she died, not because she had to, but much like her son, she died because she wanted to, uh, to imitate her son completely as he died because he wanted to, uh, to pay the price for our sins. But we can meditate on the joy of Our Lady to see her son ascend into heaven, and it certainly was that. Uh, our Lord said, um, if you loved me, he says it to all the apostles and to our blessed mother, if you loved me, you would have joy because I go to the Father that is the ascension of our Lord. And the apostles and our Blessed Mother and the 120 disciples, maybe even more people than that, would have had great joy to see our Lord leave them. Not because of leaving them, but because it's the reward for his struggle and his race, you know. The book of the Acts says that God uh, raised his son from the dead. The book of the Acts also tells us that our Lord ascended to heaven. We get the idea that these are rewards for his faithfulness. So there was joy on the part of the apostles to see their Lord rise into heaven. And, uh, but they had a few moments of being kind of <clears throat> in awe about the situation. And then understanding that, oh, well now we're alone. What are we going to do without him? And the angels, two angels, sent them back to the sending pool to go and pray. Because our Lord had said, if I don't go, I can't send the paraclete to you. If I do go, he will come to you, and he will teach you all things. So the apostles were kind of taking it on, taking it on faith right now. We've got to get back to pray. We've got to receive the Holy Ghost. Because that's going to be just as good as having our Lord with us, again, but even deeper, because he's going to teach us all things. He's going to completely transform our souls. So while they had some sort of shock at losing our Lord, they also had great happiness that this journey had just begun, and now we're going to be transformed in Christ, and we're going to be able to bring the gospel to the whole world because of the coming of the Holy Ghost. So the apostles had this combination of kind of sadness at the loss of our Lord, and then also happiness and excitement that now he's really going to convert them. That's what was going on with them. What about... Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. Well, of all the people that loved our Lord, she loved him most. So when our Lord says something like, if you loved me, you would have great joy because you go to the Father. Well, no one loved and loves our Lord more than his Holy Mother does. So much so that we say that uh, his life is her life. So that when she offers him up on the cross, she's actually offering up her own life. These are not just sweet and pious words. They are reality. I'm sure that some, part, some way or other they're part of theology. And this is the mother of God. Uh, she offered her son on the cross as she offered her own life. She loved him more than anyone else. So when she sees him <coughs> rise into heaven, she's very, very happy because he goes to the Father. But I think we all know that eventually there is an element of sorrow 
the Blessed Mother goes through. And I don't like to confuse the word sorrow with sadness. The two things are different. We celebrate Our Lady of the Seven Sorrows. We don't celebrate the depressing Mother of God. <laughs> Our Lady of the Seven Sadnesses. No, it doesn't exist. There's a difference. <coughs> sorrow is when we go through misery or suffering. But that can be transformed into the glory of God by saying, I offer this to you in reparation for all the sin. That's a beautiful thing. Sadness is when unfortunate things happen to us and we say, you know, we just kind of have a, have a pity party for ourselves and we say I'm the most miserable creature of all and uh, we kind of have an attitude that this is unfair that God treats me like this. That's not good. That's sadness. That's indulging in our own pity. Sorrow is not that. So, even though Our Lady has the greatest joy of everyone, because she loves our Lord more than everyone, she also has an element of sorrow, which is, you can't be with Him now. Our Blessed Mother could not be with her son for the 15 years of her life before he was conceived. And now our Lord will disappear, at least physically, and she's going to be without him again another 15 years, at least. And this is only where I take a guess, and I could be wrong. But <clears throat> I imagine that Our Lady was offered a choice. Would you like to go now with your son? Or would you like to stay around to guide his infant church as it gets off the ground? <coughs> For our Blessed Mother, we know her style. Her style is, I will do whatever God wants of me in order to bring about the redemption, in order to bring about the fruits of redemp the redemption, in order to bring about the glory of God. So it's kind of like a no-brainer. If Our Lady is offered any kind of choice, she's always going to opt for the one which gives more glory to God. And in this case, it gives more glory to God for her to stay around with the infant church and guide it. And in fact, it's even, it's not just that it sounds good, but there's also something very logical about it. And that is that the incarnation happened the Son of God came to this world. Because the Blessed Mother disposed herself to be the instrument of the conception of the, by the Holy Ghost that has brought our Lord into the world. So we're, in, we're, we're indebted to the Blessed Virgin Mary for the incarnation happened. The incarnation of our Lord in his physical body. But now that our Lord has gone to heaven, in just a few days' time, with the coming of the Holy Ghost, we're going to have the birth of what we call the mystical body of our Lord. And we are all members of that. Just as Our Lady was present for the incarnation of His physical body, it seems necessary that Our Lady is present for the incarnation of His mystical body. And that's why she stays. The mysteries of our Lord's life are going to be lived out in all the members of his church, starting with these first Christians, and that's why our lady will stay with the church. And this is a great suffering. It's a great sacrifice. But she does it out of love for God. Uh, we can't imagine our lady getting to heaven without offering up every piece of sorrow, every ounce of sorrow she could po possibly offer up in order to unite herself with the cross of her son. And that is why our lady stayed with the infant church. Someone has described it as um, our lady is like a piece of fruit on a tree, and the tree would be compared to the cross. 
And Our Lady draws every single piece of, every single single ounce of light from this tree in order to become the ripest fruit possible. And so finally, the piece of fruit drops from the tree all on its own. It's in its peak of ripeness. Because the tree, the cross, has no more to offer it. Or has no more to offer to our Blessed Mother. She has been as generous as anyone can possibly imagine with every single sacrifice that God has presented to us. The big ones are the Incarnation, Will you sacrifice your life along with your son? Our Blessed Mother says, absolutely. I am nothing but the servant of God, the slave of God. It is our Blessed Mother who sends her son on to his um, public ministry to go out and be known by the world, even if, even if his enemies are going to know him and eventually crucify him. And finally, it is our Blessed Mother who offers her son on the cross for us. So she's constantly making sacrifices through the life of, during the life of her son. And finally, when he goes to heaven, our Blessed Mother is there to both rejoice for his going to be with his father, and she's also there to say, I'm with this infant church, I'm going to guide it, just as I guided the child Jesus for his growing up years. We can't imagine our Blessed Mother doing anything but this. We can't imagine our Blessed Mother being offered, you know, two, uh, two options. This one, you will suffer less. This one, you will suffer more. Which one do you choose? The Blessed Mother will always choose the one where, I, where she suffers more because that's more of offering up her own soul in order to give more glory to God. And she's not going to miss any opportunity to offer the maximum amount of glory to God. And that's why she stays in the infant church. So it is especially appropriate at this time of year, in the month of May, that we consider all the sacrifice that Our Lady makes for you and me. And she is the one who makes all the sacrifice that I just described in order that we can receive grace into our soul. Uh, when we pray the rosary, when we have any kind of meditating on our Blessed Mother, any kind of devotion to our Blessed Mother, or Mother Mary as we say here, when we do that, we are living from her virtues. I would say it's very similar to receiving the Holy Eucharist, although it's not a sacrament. And the Holy Eucharist is God, so that's still infinite. Our Lady is not infinite. But, you know, when, you, when we receive the Holy Eucharist, we think of those words of um, St. Paul. Uh, he who eats the flesh and drinks the blood of Christ proclaims the death of Christ in him until he comes. What that means is when we receive the Holy Eucharist, not only are we receiving a great gift for our soul, which is the author of grace himself, but we are also, we are also identifying with this sacrifice and we begin to live the life, the sacrifice of Christ in our own life. The Holy Eucharist gives us that strength. Just as our Lord was so resigned to his Father's will while he was dying on the cross, we become something like that when we receive the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist is present by sacrifice, so when I receive it, I receive sacrifice and I begin to live the sacrifice. By resisting my temptations and putting to death my, putting to death my passions, etc. So the Holy Eucharist makes us Christ. The Holy Eucharist the Holy Eucharist makes us like our Divine Lord. Well, it's very similar in praying to the Mother of God, or putting on your scapular in the morning. You should never take it off at night, at night when we sleep, but we, we bathe and we have to take the sacrifice, the sac scapular off, and put the scapular back on, etc. Kiss it and make the sign of the cross, etc. You're putting on our Blessed Mother. When you pray the Rosary or wear the Rosary on your person, you're putting on the Blessed Mother. When you pray to her, you're putting her on. It's sort of a, an illogical way of speaking. You know, put on Christ. Well, we also put on the Blessed Mother. So what kind of virtues did she have? 
Well, the mother of God, she has docility to the will of God. She has obedience to the will of God. She has the sacrifice of herself in order, to, in order to bring about the will of God and the glory of God. You know, if, if we had just one of those things, that docility to the will of God, I mean, really, really had it, like Our Lady has it, do you know how many sins we would be rejecting all the time? We would see temptation before us, and we would say, well, that has nothing to do with submitting my will to God, so I won't even consider it, you know? That's a true docility to the will of God. And sometimes we might feel like I have no docility. I'm constantly looking for myself, and that's why I don't say no to temptation. Well, I respond to you, or respond to all of us, really. Just take our rosary seriously. Take our Marian life seriously. Her virtues will become your virtues. Temptation will present itself, and you will say, I, I'm not here because I love myself. I'm here because I love God. And right now, it looks like the love of myself has to take a little humiliation in order that the love of God stand out more in my soul. And that's a very Marian way of looking at life. So as we consume the Holy Eucharist, and that makes us more and more into God, we have a life of the Blessed Mother, which makes us more and more like her, docile to the will of God, so that God receives all the glory. This is what makes her frightening to the devil, because he's, she's the antithesis to him. The devil's all about, I'm big, I'm important, I'm not going to think about God, and that's what makes him fall. And then along comes this humble, kind of unknown virgin of Nazareth, saying, I'm nothing, God is everything, and that's why she's exalted. She overturns the, the kingdom of the devil, and she can overturn the kingdom of the devil inside of each and every one of us. She does so. Some may think, well, I'm still battling with all kinds of sins, and I, I have a lot, great love and devotion for Our Lady. My answer to, to that is, it's slowly and it's step by step, but it's constant. And um, we have humility along the way, which gives us greater confidence in, us, in, in God rather than in ourselves. And the Blessed Mother is behind all of that. Our conversion of soul is not exactly the way we perceive it, but the way God perceives it. <clears throat> so we give this reverence to the Blessed Mother, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, during this whole month of May, for a few of the reasons I said. <clears throat> One of them is, our Lord has now ascended into heaven, and now it is our Blessed Mother who's forming this infant church. Who, I should say, who's guiding this infant church. Our Lord has ascended into heaven, and our Blessed Mother is the happiest for him, for his victory and his reward. But also, Our Lady is the one who goes to the greatest sorrow, because she can't be with the Son now, in this moment of victory. She had to wait for him to come, now she has to wait to be reunited with him. She would have loved to have been with him right from the start in heaven. But it's almost as if our Lord, God, said, because of your sufferings, I came into the world. Now because of your sufferings, again, we can get the church going. So, uh, she had, you know, we pray to her at this time of the year, the year, because of the ascension, because of her joy, because of her sorrow, and finally because uh, by uniting ourselves with our Blessed Mother, this will cause new life to be formed in us, the new life of grace, let's say, grace increasing in us as we see uh, the life of things in nature growing and coming alive again at this time of year. So give plenty of uh, devotion and time and meditation to Our Lady during this month. You won't regret it. She deserves it. Our Lord wants us to give her that honor, and that's going to have nothing but glory for God in it 
and the increase of grace and holiness in our own soul. In the name of the mm -hmm. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Amen.